Today I have a very special video for you all and it includes a special guest. Let's find out who it is. Hello book friends, I'm Jen and welcome to my reading life. Today I have a very special video for you all and as you can see, I am not alone today. I am joined by the lovely Nora. You can find her at Pear Jelly on Instagram and she is the creative mind behind Spinster September. Nora is here today to talk all things spinsters and to share with us how she came up with this reading challenge idea and to talk with us about this year's challenge. Nora, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk all things spinsters with you today. Um, but to get us going, I know a lot of my viewers and subscribers may not be familiar with either you, and they may be hearing about Spinster September for the first time and uh, wondering what is Spinster September. But first, let's kind of go back to the beginning, and maybe you could share a little bit about yourself and your background as a reader. Yeah, um, so I... I started Bookstagram about a year ago. It was March 2023, and it was really like an outlet for me to find some creativity. Uh, you know, I think like many people, the past few years had been quite difficult. I had some health issues. So I really needed a space where I could just enjoy something and be creative again and just forget about the rest. And uh, so I started my Bookstagram account, so bear.jelly. And I, I think I tend to focus on women writers. Uh, my comfort zone is uh, women writers in the UK, especially in the mid-century, like early 20th to mid-century. I, th I think that's really what I like to read the most. Uh, I like to read uh, seasonally, so I like to match my books with the seasons. And another big aspects of my reading is also secondhand book shopping. I love that. I, lo I love... Um, finding a new shop where I can thrift. Uh, I love the, the secondhand box as objects. Um, and then uh, another thing I'm really interested in as well is uh, I think what people call heritage publishing. So you see all these um, pu publishers such as Persephone, Virago, uh, McNally, uh, Dawn Books and Faber Editions that will bring up um, old titles that have been forgotten over time and they're bringing uh, them back uh, to a new audience. Nowadays, I really have a, a, a strong interest for these um, publishers. Fantastic. Have you always been a reader? Has that been something that's been a part of your life always? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think I, I read a little bit before school age because my mom was really adamant for me to learn how to read and I, I guess, you know, occupy myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've always been like the shy kids who would lose themselves in books. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, like many kids, Roald Dahl was quite formative for me. Uh, what else? I love Alice in Wonderland and... Um, yeah, loads of kid literature. I think mm -hmm. that, like many people, have uh, ha, you know, have stayed with me, and I, I read quite regularly. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And you currently live in Ireland, correct? Where I did do. you grow? I, where did you grow up? So I grew up in Brussels, uh, in Belgium, mm -hmm. and uh, about 15, 16 years ago now, uh, I moved to Dublin. Lovely, wonderful. Well, fantastic. Let's let's get into, first of all, like I said, I think probably I have some viewers who um, maybe don't even know what what is a spinster novel? Like, could you describe that? Give us a little definition of the spinster novel? Yeah, I think uh, it'd be maybe interesting to define what first what a spinster mm -hmm. is. So a spinster is historically a woman who uh, is not who is not married, who is not likely to get married, who doesn't want to marry, um, and who has, pa who, have, who has passed the age of marriage. And so that's the the general definition. It, it's obviously quite archaic now because I think the age of marrying is something that's completely expanded for women. And obviously we're not tied to our, to our status, our married status as uh, we used to be. And when it comes to the spinster novel, um, I think spinsters have always sort of been a, 
around in books I'm not I've not read that much um like as I said my focus is really the 20th century novel uh, so I'm not very versed on what, what happens before but I think you know a lot of women uh, before the, the 20th century uh, were in, in books were governesses uh, or generally unmarried women I think in uh, in Jane Austen for instance unmarried women uh, serves as a a point of tension as a sort of role of what you don't want to be uh, as a woman. So they always sort of featured um, in uh, in literature, I think. Um, I've got here two examples of early 20th century novels where mm -hmm. spinsters are a focus. So we have here Elizabeth Gaskell Cranford, mm -hmm. uh, which was written in 1853, and this focuses on a village of women. So that's, I think, one of the the, the novels that comes to my mind pre-20th century. And there's another one as well here by George mm -hmm. uh, Gissing, The Odd Women. Um, odd Women is not a way to say, uh, I guess, spinsters. So it focuses on five women who are not married. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think the term spinster novel uh, really exploded in the interwar, so between the two world war, mm -hmm. when um, there, there was this fem phenomenon called the surplus women. So right. because most men were at the front, uh, women were sort of left on the shelf, they couldn't get married, there was not enough men uh, to get around. And combined with that, uh, there working status changed because again, not enough men were there to do the jobs at home, women joined the workforce. So the, the status changed. And I think the writers at the time picked up on that and they felt like there was a new audience here that needed to hear stories about these unmarried women who were working. So I think the most famous one uh, of the interwar is Lolly Willows by Sylvia Tanzen Warner. Mm -hmm. You also have, um, Win Win Winfred Holby with her great character Sarah Barton, you know, who's a teacher. Again, teacher were teachers were generally uh, profession were really not were allowed and were not allowed to get married. And she has this brilliant quote where she says, "I was born a spinster, and by God, I'm going to spin." So I really love that. Um, and then yeah, you also have F. M. Mayer. So I'm giving you a little bit of mid uh, mm -hmm. interwar spinster novels. Yes. Yeah, actually, last Spencer September, I read both Lolly Willows and uh, South Riding, which I absolutely loved. Oh, but very different books, but I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love them as well. And mm -hmm. as you said, very different books and different aspects of um, spinsterhood, I mm -hmm. think. For sure, for sure. So what made you come up with this idea for Spinster September? When did I come up? Or how did you come up with the how? idea? Uh, well... It's it's been I, I think it starts with the fact that it has been an interest of mine since I'd, I'd say my early 30s. Um, I was really hungry for stories of women who were not married, who didn't have children. Mm -hmm. And I think I started looking for them maybe in films first, but I always felt like I was faced with that sort of uh, stereotype of the crazy cat lady. And I felt like I didn't <laughs> I didn't really get those stories with women with com complex lives um, and in our lives and yeah different ambitions than you know being with cats which is fine I mean that, that sounds fun to me as well but um I was yeah I was really looking for them because I myself knew that I didn't want kids and I just I just needed to hear about women who trod that path first and what what that path was like mm -hmm. um and uh, last year when I um uh, as I did Spinster September, it was my birthday, and I don't know if that's something you do, but around my birthday, I like to have a special TBR or a special mm -hmm. theme, like just make it special. Yes. And I, I really wanted to explore that theme because up until Bookstagram, my reading has been really sort of scattered in the way that my reading is very much led by what I find in secondhand bookshops. So it's like, it, it's is led by chance really so I was like okay I want to like specifically um, read that team I have probably enough books now on my shelves whatever I found and I can get stuff from the library and be a bit more focused on that and mm -hmm. so I asked on Instagram well would anyone would like to um, join me and yeah people were very enthusiastic about it yes 
very enthusiastic. <laughs> I loved seeing, I, and I can't remember if I saw it first on your channel, if I saw, or if I, I mean, on your channel, on your Instagram account, or if I saw it first through somebody else that I follow, but I thought, what a, what a wonderful idea, because I also, like you had mentioned earlier, do love, I've really gotten into reading um, books by women written in the early to mid 20th century. And that's a time period that I'm just very focused on at the moment. And spinster literature is fairly prolific during that time period, as you mentioned, because of the surplus women from World War One. So um, I was so excited last year. And I think I read four or five books about spinsters in September last year. <laughs> yeah, it's surprising how, much, how many of them we can find. And I think, yes, we can sort of think about a spinster novel, but they pop up or crop up in many novels. And it's, I think it's an interesting way to look at your shelves and pick up books that you may not have noticed uh, sure. first. For sure. And just, you know, I think it's a way of reading women's literature um, with a certain, through a certain lens, um, because oftentimes women are portrayed in novels as wives and mothers. And I really like looking at uh, the, a woman's life through a different lens. And I think that's a really, the spinster novel is a really interesting way to kind of take a look at what other kinds of lives women lead. And, you know, yeah, it's, Exactly. For me, the, the interest is that I want to know what a woman what a woman does with her life when she's not taking care of kids or her husband. And that leaves a lot of time. Like what do these women do with that, that time and how do they find purpose? Because, you know, his I think historically women have always said that the main purpose of our lives is having kids. Mm -hmm. And so how do you find a purpose that could equally fulfill you I think that's what's interesting to me absolutely absolutely and I think for me personally like I came to um wife and motherhood very late in life I was in my late 30s when I got married and I didn't have my son until I was 40 so I lived a very full single life up until that point and but I also think even if you are married and have children that looking at the spinster life through that particular lens just lends you to looking at your own life as how can I live my life for me? It doesn't have to just be about being a wife and a mother. There is more to life than that. And I, I really appreciate those novels and how they delve into women's inner lives in particular and what that's like. And I just think that's, it, it's so thought provoking for me personally. Yeah, I have also a big interest in books that focuses on women uh, in middle age. And I think there's some interesting parallel here because in middle age, women maybe, um, you know, have that more time on their hands because they're not the prime, or prime carer of, mm -hmm. of their kids. And I think there's some really interesting parallel here to find um, where women has to, to f find a new purpose maybe mm -hmm. for their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about this year's challenge? I know there is a group read, but maybe you can just talk a little bit about the parameters of the challenge itself. So in terms of the challenge, it's really relaxed and there's no, I, I've not made any prompts or anything. If you read a book that features a spinster, whether she's the main character or she's like a satellite character then you're in and you don't have to read you know a certain amount of book you can read one book or as many as you want it's really easy um, and then we have a group read so uh, this year I picked Ryan Journey by Anshli I have right oh, here. there it is and you have the Mac the beautiful McNally editions mm -hmm. I have got the Dawn books speaking of heritage publishing those mm -hmm. those two publishers do a really great job but so this is a novel that was originally set in the uh, originally published in the 1980s and sort of forgot been forgotten uh, but this focuses on Charlotte who's an aunt so she's sort of the nanny of her brother's kids and she joins her brother and his family to a trip to Germany on the Rhine and um, as far I, as I can understand there's there'll be some sort of awakening for her during that trip mm -hmm. yes and I was really sorry I was really interested in that one because uh, the description of her as an aunt uh, really reminded me of Lolly Willows which is one of my favorites mm -hmm. book. 
Yes, absolutely. It'll be interesting to see how this one compares to Lolly Willows having a, a sort of character in a similar situation. And I like that this is set a little bit earlier. So we're in 1851 in yeah. this novel. And I'm really excited to read a book set during that time period featuring a spinster and just kind of see how that again compares because Lolly Willows is set written and set in, uh, you know, in the early 1900s so 1920s yeah right exactly yeah and it's also I find it really interesting I've, I've read a little bit around that novel that and she who was re re writing in 1980s mm -hmm. uh, apparently she was very successful at bringing up that sort of uh, 19th century style which mm. I found really fascinating yeah very interesting yes so that's it how did you how did you find that novel uh, well, because I follow Don Box and McNally, I always mm -hmm. have an eye on on what they they do, and you know, uh, as a somebody who like to thrift, I always have an eye on their upcoming catalog and see if I can find the writer in second hand or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's how I find out about it. Fantastic! I'm so I'm so bad about finding books. I never know. <laughs> like I usually that's, find that's them new... through other people. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, that's pretty much a new thing for me I feel like maybe I should keep my um my finger in the pulse being now on bookstagram mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes I'm I'm very bad about following what publishers are doing and different things I feel like I I'm I'm not good at keeping up with the Joneses so <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it can really drive you crazy like oh I you know there's so many books coming out so this, yes right I mean much, yeah. yes absolutely there's there's so there's already so many books and there's so many new books always coming out. It, it sometimes feels overwhelming, but uh, it just means there's lots of wonderful books out there to read, even yeah. if we can't get to them all in our lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so in terms of participating, do you, can people, I mean, people could obviously, I guess, just read on their own. They can post on social media. Is there any other way to participate? Are you going to have a discussion about the group read or is it just kind of yeah uh, so so for the group read there there is a group i'm gonna set up a group chat on instagram so okay. if anyone wants to join just send me a message or a comment and i just put your name in, in the chat and we'll read it throughout the month and i think maybe the last sunday or the third sunday we'll have like a final discussion i just want to leave enough time for people to publish if they want to their review mm -hmm. um during the month uh, but in terms of what you're reading uh, you know you can publish or post whatever you want just use the spinster se september hashtag i'm always delighted uh, to see people's tbr reviews recommendations it's just such a joy for me and i've got so so many recommendations to last at least three lifetimes right. so please add to that. <laughs> I, love that I know every time I see your stories posted where you're showing people's TBRs and recommendations I'm like oh there there's more to add to my TBR <laughs> so it's yeah wonderful. And yeah. And you can be on uh, any social media. I'm active on Instagram, but right. also on Twitter okay. or X. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess on I, I would, if I type on YouTube, I would probably see if you use the hashtag as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. yes, anywhere absolutely. Um, and I will link all of Nora's um, social media accounts in the description box down below so that you can easily find her. And if you want to sign up to do the group read and be part of that discussion on Instagram, uh, you can reach out to Nora directly. Um, so I think my next thing, next question is, do you have a good place for people to start if they've never read a spinster novel before? Like what, what are some good, uh, jumping off points? Yeah, I was pondering on your question, uh, Phil, maybe a reason why somebody may not have started a spinster uh, novel, maybe that may, the, the subject, uh, may not str straight away grab them. So I was mm -hmm. thinking maybe, a way to dip your toes um, into it would be to write uh, to read a novel that has nothing to do with spinsters. So I'm thinking for, uh, of 84 uh, Charing Cross Road mm. by Helen Hans. Mm. It's never mentioned that she right. was not married or had no kids. It's really not the focus on the novel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an epistolary novel, uh, but it's a wonderful one to read um, if you're passionate about books. It's a lovely relationship she has with the bookseller mm -hmm. in England. And yeah, I can't recommend this book enough. Yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> and 
another one I can also <clears throat> recommend, I think, which is one of the best novels of all time, is Rebecca uh, by Daphne du Maurier, Mrs. Danvers. Um, I think it's a spinster is again it's not really said but it, sound, it sounds to me that's what she is and I she's also one of my favorite characters ever she has such a presence so I think that's a good one um also you can dip your toes with uh, a, a big subgenre in spinster novels which is spinster mysteries with the most famous spinster of them all Miss Marple mm -hmm. I think it's a good one just yeah go into that I think you'll find many spinsters or you can you know, check some children literature. Mary Poppins, um, again, is also a, a, a maybe not so known, not known as a spinster, but I guess that's that's what she she was like many governesses uh, mm -hmm. over time. Yes, yes, I actually think lots of children's literature feature spinsters. That's that's kind of funny. I hadn't really thought of it in that in that way before. Actually, I just read a children's book called Gone Away Lake, and there is a woman in that who is a spinster, and that would be a fantastic read. So yes. Yeah, I think they're a, a, a popular type of character in children's novel because they're sort of, I guess, asexual in some ways. Mm -hmm. They're not threatening or anything. So they're good characters to uh, include in children's literature. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, now that we've kind of uh, talked about a place that's good to start, but what are some of your favorite spinster novels? Uh, yeah, well... As I mentioned, my favorite spinster novel of all time is Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was written in the 1920s, so in that interwar period. And it focuses on a, uh, a woman who's, uh, again, an aunt, and she's taking care of the kids of her, um, of her brothers, mm -hmm. her, her brother's kids. And she does that very dutifully uh, until the kids are grown up. And mm -hmm when they've sort of fled the coop she she start she starts thinking that she wants to have a life on her own and she starts to put that in place she wants a, a little cottage somewhere in England and so she she I, I'm not going to say much more than that but it's one one of the reasons why it's my favorite spinster and I think they're not that easy to find is uh, it's a spinster who you know is not dwelling on her spinsterhood but who has decided to take the life by the rain and make something um out of her life and I just I just love that that kind of stories where women are just going for it mm -hmm. absolutely I think Lolly Willows is a fantastic example and I think it's a novel that's really unexpected in the way it yeah. plays out so I think it is a fantastic spinster story and it was definitely one of, I mean obviously I've read novels that have spinsters in them throughout my life but when the challenge came up last year that was the first book that I read and it was it was a wonderful introduction uh, to really think about and focus on the spinster herself as the focus of the novel so Wonderful yeah it's, it's it's I think yeah it's a great it's, it's great that you started with this one and, it, and it's a great recommendation for one to start with because I yeah. think if you're sort of going blindly in Spencer novels you can easily fall into very tragic stories and that might not be something you you are in the mood and that right. may be you know scary a little bit of the genre but those stories are yeah there 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 are a lot of them of you know tragic destinies and fates uh, for, mm -hmm. for Spencer's for sure. For sure. Um, but yes, and I think it's good. I think you want to read novels where the spinster has taken control of her own life. She's not just letting life happen to her. She has been proactive about where her life is going. And I think Lolly Willis is a great example of that. Yeah. And another one, I also one of my favorite, and I think it's also the same sort of spinster, what I personally call alpha spinsters. So spinster are just like going for it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is The Prime of Miss uh, Jean Bodie by Mira Spark. It's for me, it's a very interesting character because she's not, um, she's a bit of a villain. Let, mm -hmm. Let's say that she's, she's quite complex. And I think I, I love a, a woman that disturbs um and she's very flamboyant which I think flamboyance is not something that you would associate necessarily with spinsters mm -hmm. uh, but yeah this is a story of a problematic teacher in Edinburgh I think in the 1930s mm -hmm. uh, very interesting very slim so you yes. can get through this one really quickly but I love this one a lot yes I that one I read also last year and oh. I think it's one 
I finished it and that's a book I feel like I want to talk to people about who have also read it and I feel like I need to read it again to fully take in everything that Muriel Spark was doing in that novel. It's it it packs up for being such a short like almost novella length, it really packs a punch. Yeah, I was surprised um last year I I've read it a couple of years ago but last year I had to sort of re uh, reacquaint myself with it for mm-hmm. um, for something and uh, I was really surprised to reread passages and it just gave me another light on her so, some stuff that I had not picked up on the first time I read her because I think when the first time I read her I t- took her at face value but I think she's quite a dodgy shifty mm-hmm. kind of person and when you read it the second time you kind of see more clearly who she is Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's definitely a book I'm going to read again to get to it on a different level. I think, I think, you know, Mm -hmm. when you, it's always funny because when you read a novel for the first time, you are experiencing everything and you don't know what's coming. And so part of your brain is trying to work through like what you're reading. And I think when you come in a novel for the second time, you can just dive into it further because you know what's coming and you're not wondering about how is this all going to play out because you know that. And so you can look at the novel from a different perspective that second time around or third yeah. or fourth. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so another favorite uh, Spencer novel, which I read last year, um, is The Rector's Daughter by F.M. Mayer. Um, it was such a heartbreaking one, so it's not one to go to if you're looking for a happy Jolly Spencer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just so beautifully done. It's about this young woman who is the daughter of, of a, a vicar, a rector. And so she's been taking care of, of, his, li- of, of his life. Uh, of him uh, all her life and she's desperate for the uh, approval of her dad um, which is a tricky one for her and she's gonna fall in love with somebody and have a stolen kiss which will change her life um, in ways that are quite dramatic Um, but it's such a beautifully written novel um, a lot of there's a strong connection between Mary Jocelyn, the, the protagonist, and nature, and there's also a different. What I really like about this one is that there's different depiction of spinsterhood. Uh, when she's realizing that maybe spinsterhood will be her lot, she's meeting different kind of women and can see different types of living that way. And I really enjoyed that. Oh, that sounds really good. I think Mm. I have that one on my TBR, but I have not read that one yet. So have you made your TBR? I, it keeps growing, Nora. (laughs) I'm supposed to post it, I think Friday. I still have not really settled on the number. I only read like maybe five to six books uh, a month. I cannot do that more than that. So I have to be quite strict. Yes. I, I would say mine's more a pile of possibilities. This is it sitting right here next to me. And I uh I think probably at the end of the this video after you and I get off, I will share quickly some of my selections for this month. I will probably only read two or three of these, especially because I'm going to read the group read as well. But I just like to have choices because I'm a mood reader. So well, that's good. It sounds like you have a, a lot of choices and I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you will pick, your yes. final picks. Yes, so I am very excited. <laughs> Since we were talking about what's on my TBR, I want to know, do you have any that spinster novels you think that I would personally enjoy? Because I'm always looking for new things to add that I haven't already yeah. got on TBR. So maybe um, I have a, a sense of you as somebody who likes as you said like 20th century mm-hmm. uh, writers and maybe you like cozy novels I do I, I do. do yeah mm-hmm. so um, I was thinking I don't know if you read any Mary Stewart I have I have actually I have right behind, this whole stack right here is all oh. Mary Stewart and next to it <laughs> I've read everything <laughs> he's written <laughs> I love Thorny Hold that is a fantastic oh, okay. book so I, I was right by picking yes, that one for you. <laughs> you were 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah, it's it's a lovely one. And it's again, if you're someone who are scared about dark stories, this is really a, a really cozy, jody one, I think. It, 
Yes, it really is. And I love her descriptions of the co of Thorny Hold, of the cottage, and just kind of like setting up house and that whole aspect to it, which is slightly different if other people have read Mary Stewart before. She often writes what I would consider to be like romantic suspense novels. And there's a small amount of this, but this is definitely one of her coziest books. And it's a great yeah. fall read as well. Yeah, it starts in September, I think, mm -hmm. or her birthday is around September, yes, which is right. also an important date in her life because this is as she receives that cottage from her uh, past uh, or related uh, godmother. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, that acquisition is like a rebirth for her where she's yeah. discovering that she's like a homebody. And mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's so lovely. It is. It really is. I love that addition you have there, too. That's really yeah. cool. I, I don't know if I can. Oh, that's <laughs> that great. Little cottage just like makes me dream when it, whenever I see it. Like, right. I go yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. What about Excellent Women by Barbara Pym? Have you read that one? <laughs> yes, I have. Oh. I, I have that one. I've read it twice, actually. Okay. Um. So it is. You're... I seem to be a bit too right in the way that you were. <laughs> but you already read them. Okay. Let me. I've I've put on the side all of my spinster reads. Um, let me think about it. Um, do you like mysteries? I love mysteries. Have you read Gordy Knight? No, but actually, I am doing a read through this year of all the Lord Peter books, and well, I may have read Gordy Knight, but like way back when I was maybe in my teens, and I mean, I you know. Like, I know what the story's about, but I don't remember it at all. And I think it's going to be my October read for, because oh. I'm reading all of the novels in order this year. And I started in January. And so it is the second to last novel. So um, I yeah. think I'm reading it in October. That's a great, I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. So you're going to have a little bit of spinster September to in, get you through October. <laughs> it is. Well, my birthday is in October. So is it? it worked out perfectly that Gaudi Night was the book, but it just happened to fall in my birthday month. And I was like, yes, because I think it's one of the best novels in the series. And yeah. I love Harriet Vane. She's a fantastic character. Yeah, it's an interesting one because I, whenever I've been asked like which which one to read or anything, I always say like read them all. Even though this one is definitely the best, mm -hmm. I think you need to get to know these two characters, Peter Winsey yes. and Harriet Vane, and have the full emotional impact of them, you know, connecting together mm -hmm. when it comes to this book. That's I think that's that would be a, a beautiful way to to read them if you read yes. them all. And this one is, I think, very interesting in a sort of from the spinster point of view because it focuses on ac academia mm -hmm. and univers like the sort of early uh, setting of uh, universities for women in Oxford, so, which I find a fascinating set setting. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love books set in academia. And I think that's one of the reasons I really am looking forward to revisiting Gaudy Night because... I, I I just love that university setting. I think it's fantastic. So, and again, another great read for the fall for September. Yeah. Because I don't know what so it atmospheric. is. Yes, absolutely. Even though I haven't been in school for a very, very long time, I still love to read books about schools and yeah. teachers in the fall. For some, That feels very <laughs> seasonal to me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I do the same. Yes. So Spinster September works perfectly because a lot of spinsters in novels as you mentioned earlier are teachers and yeah. you know are in or governesses or nannies are in that sort of you know teaching slash caring for children role um but they don't actually have children of their own so I think that's um this time of year is perfect for reading those stories um well is there anything else that we haven't talked about or anything else you'd like to share about spinsters novels spinster september anything no, I, I, I just want people to have fun. I, I sometimes I think uh, as a Virgo, I understand the, the the desire to stick to rules. And sometimes people come to me and ask me, oh, what is, what's, when, what is, what is a spinster? Uh, can I read a, a, a book when a, a woman Mary at the end, like in Mrs. Bunkle or, or Miss Bunkle, or mm -hmm. it, is it okay if I read that type of woman, if she's a widow or whatever? It really in the end it doesn't matter I think it's really about reading 
about women who are making a life on their own, who are relying on themselves, who are making their own path. Um, circumstances really is just, you know, it's just a sort of an umbrella to to read about women. So yeah, I want people to have fun and um, give me some great recommendations. That's <laughs> <It's> selfish. <laughs> right? But, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think that that's the great way to uh, play on the challenge is so that you can get more recommendations for your own personal TBR of, of yeah. books, of, of types of books that you really enjoy reading. So um, I think that's, that's what's so wonderful about the book community is people sharing books that you ne I never would have heard of otherwise. I, so many of the books, especially now that I am really focusing on reading books that aren't new books being currently published that it, I wouldn't have known where to start if I didn't have this book community to, um, you know, use as a wonderful, beautiful resource. So thank you for being a part of that because it just has enriched my reading life so, so much over the past few years. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. This, I think this uh, journey bookstagram is a lovely corner, but the Bookstagram that focuses on backlisted title, mm -hmm. I think is, is a great way to crowdsource your next read. And people are also always so keen to, you know, recommend books. And yeah, yes, it's a really yes. exciting place to be. It really is. It really is. There's some just lovely, lovely bookstagrammers out there, yourself included. So thank you so much, Nora, for coming on today and sharing all about Spinster September. I'm so very excited to start reading and um, thank you for creating such a wonderful challenge that focuses on women in novels in roles that maybe we don't see them in all the time and I think that's uh, a really lovely focus and lens through which people can read books that they might not otherwise have dipped into so thank you for that. Thank you, Jen, so much for having me. I had such a lovely time chatting with you and really excited to read the some books about spinsters with you in the coming month. Yes, absolutely. And as I mentioned before, everyone, I will have Nora's, all of Nora's information listed in the description box below, as well as all of the books that Nora shared with us today. So if you are interested in tracking any of them down, there will be links to all of those books in the description box. So thank you again, Nora, for being here today. This was a wonderful discussion. And thank happy you. Spinster September. <laughs> <laughs> happy Spinster September. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my conversation with Nora. I had such a wonderful time chatting with her about all things Spinster and Spinster September. And I am so looking forward to starting my September and fall with some lovely spinster ladies. I thought I would take this opportunity to share with all of you my pile of possibilities for Spinster September. This is definitely a pile of possibilities. There is no way I'm going to get through all of these books this month. I'm hoping to make it through maybe two or three. That would feel fantastic to me and I am very much looking forward to some of the lovely ladies that I have selected to read about this year. First off, I am going to be reading the group read book. And again, that book is Rhine Journey by Anne Schley. I love this edition. It is so beautiful. Very excited. And again, all of Nora's information is listed in the description box. So if you would like to join the group discussion, you can reach out to Nora on Instagram and she will add you to that discussion chat group. And next... I am thinking about reading Father by Elizabeth von Arnhem. And I have read twice and loved The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I have heard that this is a very different book from that. And in this, it says, since her mother's death, Jennifer has devoted years of her life to her father, managing the home and acting as his secretary. After the sudden announcement that he has remarried, Jennifer, at 33, seizes the opportunity to lead an independent life. With a humorous tone, this novel explores the familial and societal expectations placed on single women during the interwar years. Oh, a character named after me. That's fantastic. So yes, I am very much, hmm, now that I've read the back of that one... This one is moving itself up the list of books I want to read. And I've had this one on my shelf for a while. So I think maybe I, I should try to get to this one. 
And then the next book is a very new purchase for me. I just talked about this, Near Neighbors by Molly Clavering. And again, this is about Miss Balfour. Her sister has passed away and suddenly she's on her own and she gets uh, enmeshed in the lives of her neighbors, the widowed Mrs. Lennox and her five unusual and charming children. Uh, so there are domestic challenges, romantic difficulties and efforts to aid a painter's abandoned family. So I am very much looking forward to this. And this is, I think right now, the book I am going to start off Spinster September with. And then the next book I have, this is another furrowed middle brow imprint from Dean Street Press. This is Miss Mole by E.H. Young. And this says, Hannah Mull is a 40-ish spinster haunted by her past and drifting from post to post. Now a governess, now a companion for elderly women. She rarely lingers long due to a slightly troubled relationship with the truth, a tendency to speak her mind, and a fundamental mistrust of others. But Hannah's darker instincts are tempered by a stubborn self-respect and a surprising ability to find joy and inspiration in ordinary life. When she returns to her hometown of Radstow and takes an unpromising job in the home of the stuffy widowed Reverend Quarter and his daughters, she finds a situation in which her unique characteristics are not only appreciated, but essential. And I believe I first heard about this one during last year's Spinster September. Very much want to read this. I'm going to say that about every book, as you all know. Next is an author who is fantastic if you're looking for a spinster read because I believe every single one of her books, I think, features a spinster, and that is Barbara Pym. This is No Fond Return of Love, and in this one, Dulcie Mainwaring is always helping others but never looks out for herself, especially in the realm of love. Her friend Viola is besotted by the alluring Dr. Aylwin Forbes, so surely it isn't prying if Dulcie helps things along. Aylwin, however, is smitten with Dulcie's pretty young niece, and perhaps Dulcie herself, however ridiculous it might be, is falling for Aylwin. Once life's little humiliations are played out, maybe love will be returned, and fondly after all. We will see uh, what this one is like, but yes, I do love Barbara Pym. And then my next three selections are actually mysteries because, you know, I do adore mysteries and I thought it would be fun to include some in Spencer September. And the first one is Death of a Busybody by George Bellairs. Now, in this one, the spinster is actually the murder victim. So I'm not sure how prevalent she is going to feature in the story of this. But I'm hoping there will be some backstory about her life and maybe we'll get kind of glimpses into who she is as a person. Um, but Miss Tither is the village busybody and uh, she's made many enemies. Her murder, however, is a huge shock to the Reverend Ethelred Clapplady and his parish. And Inspector Little John's understanding of country ways makes him Scotland Yard's first choice for the job. So then he comes in and tries to solve what happened to this not well-liked woman, so we shall see. So a little bit of an outlier, that one, but I still thought I would include it. And the next mystery is the next book that I am going to be reading in the Ruth Galloway mystery series, which is The Ghost Fields by Ellie Griffiths. And Ruth Galloway is a spinster. She is an archaeologist, a professor of archaeology at a university in Norfolk, and she often gets herself involved in police investigations if there are bones that are found that need um, looking at because they're not sure if they are recent or if they, you know, are more of archaeological interest. And so this is during the blazing hot summer in Norfolk. And the construction crew unearths a downed American fighter plane from World War II. And Ruth Galloway determines the skeleton couldn't possibly be the pilot. And DNA tests identify the man as Fred Blackstock, a local aristocrat long presumed dead. News that seems to frighten his descendants. Events are further complicated by a TV company that wants to make a film about Norfolk's deserted Air Force bases, the so-called ghost fields, which the Blackstocks have converted into a pig farm. As production begins, Ruth notices a mysterious man loitering at Fred Blackstock's memorial service. Then human bones are found on the family's pig farm and the weather quickly turns. Can the team outrace a looming flood to find the killer? Hmm, sounds fantastic. It's still hot here, still feels like summer, even though I want it to feel like fall. So maybe I want to dive into this one where it's going to be hot in Norfolk and it's still hot here in California. 
And then, of course, if you're going to read a mystery about a spinster, you can't leave out Miss Marple. And this is They Do It With Mirrors by Agatha Christie. And this is one of the few Miss Marples that I have not yet read. And I uh, want to get to it uh, for sure this month, I think. I have not read hardly any Agatha Christie books this year. I think because I've been doing my Lord Peter Whimsey read through, I just, that has been fulfilling my need for mysteries each month. And I just haven't been picking up Agatha Christie also, but I think this might be the month for this one. And then my last two books, I have so many on my TBR. This is ridiculous. <laughs> The last two books are not mysteries. Uh, the first one is Anti Mame by Patrick Dennis, and I love the movie Anti Mame. I saw it quite a number of years ago, and it is so much fun. Anti Mame is such a larger than life character, and I am really looking forward. I, this feels like it would be a nice light read. Um, and just kind of enjoy all of Auntie Mame's antics. This might be a good one for sometime this month when I just want something really kind of quick and light. And then the last book that I have for Spinster September is The Magnificent Spinster by May Sarton. Has Spinster right in the title, so definitely on point for Spinster September. And let's see, this is her, it says this is May Sarton's most ambitious novel to date. And she explores the realities and reverberations of a 50 year friendship between two remarkable women that ended with the death of Jane Reed. It is relived because Cam in her seventies feels compelled to celebrate the magnificent spinster in a novel. Oh, so it sounds like maybe this is a book within a book. So she's writing a book and writing about her friend. Interesting. So I'm very kind of intrigued about this. And this was just a random find at a used bookstore last year, I believe sometime. When did I find this? Yeah. I found this in November last year. And hmm, has anyone read this? Can anyone tell me anything about this? I'm very curious. I've only read a few of May Sarton's like essays and some of her poetry and things. So I'm very curious. I've never read a novel by her. So if anyone could give me any insight about this one, that would be lovely. That is the wrap up for Spinster September. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to know if you're going to participate in Spinster September in any way. Remember even just reading one novel that has a character in it who is a spinster qualifies you as having participated. And this is just a fun way to read books that maybe aren't what you normally read or to maybe think about female characters in novels in a slightly different way. Nora has created a, such a fun reading challenge and I am very much looking forward to the group read and to seeing everybody's TBRs and reviews of the books that they read featuring spinsters and I am sure my uh, TBR is going to explode by the end of the month. As always, thank you so much for being here. If you could give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. That would be fantastic. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye.